Roasted Boar's Head and Brunswick Stew, William Hovey Smith, 2016. I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting, but not only do we hunt deer, we hunt other things, and most especially wild hogs. This is Hovey Smith with Hovey's Outdoor Adventures. Usually I end my videos like this rather than start them. But what we're going to talk about is what to do with a boar's head. And what I have in front of me is Brunswick stew. I did a hunt on Ossobaugh Island and came back with three boar's heads which I have cooked up. And following in the video I'll show you some of the little bit of the hunt and what we did with the heads. Now I have previous recipes published in my books about the details of making Brunswick stew as well as cooking the boar's heads themselves. Boar's heads have been used historically for ceremonial purposes as well as as food items. In olden times, like in <laughs> ancient Greece and Rome, yeah, uh, they were brought out and cooked and brought out in great ceremony and fed to everyone, and this continued in Europe and still does today. In Oxford College in England, yeah, at the feast uh, and Christmas, they bring through a boar's head with a particular song. Uh, they do the same thing with Oxford and Emory over here in Georgia. So uh, this is part of cooking tradition. In the southeast, it took on a more practical point of view. Usually, hogs are barbecued whole on spits, head included. And thus you have this head to do something with. So what the barbecue vendor did was take the head that has already been barbecued, boil it, take that meat and make a separate dish called Brunswick Stew, uh, named for Brunswick, Georgia, we claim. And that Brunswick Stew uh, consisted of the salvaged meat from the head of the hog, as long, along with uh, tomatoes, onions, vinegar always, and sometimes butter beans. Now, I like butter beans, and always corn, by the way, so uh, this was in the recipe for Brunswick stew. Now I came back with three hogs heads from my most recent hunt. And so this great pile of stuff behind me in the sink uh, represents some of the residue from the cooking of it. And the pot on the stove over here, yeah, uh, that was three quarters full of product by the time I got through with it. So basically, you either roast the heads or boil the meat off the bones separate the edible parts, yeah they are some, and then add the vegetables and slowly and slowly and slowly cook it down. And this is in product ready to go in the freezer or the refrigerator. Now I guess I salvaged, oh what, nearly two gallon I guess. Uh, it's hard to make a little bit of this stuff. If you are a hunter, uh, you can go through the procedures that I use, either boiling or roasting first, and make your Brunswick stew. Or, you can take the head, you can skin it, and you can leave the more fat on the head and roast that and bring that out as a table centerpiece and carve off the head and leave some neck section on it so you have some real meat to eat. Because there's really not terrible much meat on the head uh, what it's usually used and boiled for is to recover the fats. So here is a completed dish, and I've heated some. And you can see, obviously, the butter beans and corn. Now this also I put in a little rice because I had a lot of liquid in here. And I also add other wild game meats. Now this also has venison in it, uh, approximately 5 pounds. Taste is good. I get a little bite of vinegar, like you should. This is an acid product between the tomatoes and the added vinegar. Some might want to put a little more pepper in this. Uh, this is not to be a hot, hot product. It can have a little 
enough pepper to give it a little bit of bite, but not not much. But yeah, this is a perfectly acceptable Brunswick stew, and in fact, uh, better than most. So uh, the result is, this is what you can do with your hogshead to salvage that piece of meat, plus do something really distinctive and different with the game you take. People often wonder what to do with boar's heads. Well, in fact, this is one. Uh, this is one that's been skinned and roasted, and it's just out of the oven. Now, everyone knows of the boar's head brands of cold meats, and also the many boar's head taverns that were very popular in Europe and especially England. And this is what they served as bar food in the day in the 1400s. Yeah. And these were also brought out with great ceremony at feast and oh in fact at Oxford uh, they still do parade a boar's head in, on Christmas Day as a feast item. Well this is just one treatment of it. Now I've done boar's head several different ways. Uh, in some cases I have skint them uh, and left more fat on them so you give a more crusty finish. In others I've actually scraped them and roasted them with the hides on and uh, that gives well actually a better looking thing and put a little crab apple in its mouth and uh, a couple of cherries in the eye sockets and that kind of stuff so it makes for a very very impressive meal uh, how does it taste well it tastes fine uh, the real meat is in the jowls and also on that little bit of neck that's left back of the head uh, don't eat the brains per se or at least I don't now I also make Brunswick stew, which is what I did with two smaller hogs just recently. And I have that stew in preparation. And I'm going to pick the meat off the skull and the backbone here and incorporate that in Brunswick stew. Or you could just go ahead and slice it and serve it as it is as a centerpiece on the table. Now here on the table is what my wife and many other people say doesn't exist. Actual edible meat from the head of the hog. So this is going to be diced up nicely and then this will go in Brunswick stew. And that long piece on the top is in fact as you suspect the tongue. Which are quite edible on many animals except alligators. Now gator tongue, uh uh, I, <laughs> I haven't been able to eat that one. But uh, anything else? Yeah. Yeah, tongue's pretty good. Well, here's a Brunswick stew and also the remains of the skull from boiling off the meat and salvaging it. And this is yet another batch of Brunswick stew uh, made at another time from other hogs. Now, here I am on one of my island hunts at Osaba Island, my little truck that hauls my camping gear. And uh, we get it on and off the island by boat. And here is another boat load including my gear and here's my little pile of stuff uh, I'm one guy so this is what I use for a three-day hunt it's mid-afternoon and we've taken our time and put up our camp up of course for one guy and putting up a strange tent and having to rig everything for the first time uh, it took longer than usual now as you can see I've rigged my tarp up including the shortened end over there which you can barely see in the white and that's adequate that's about how much tarp you need for a tent this size I have an adequate amount of protection in the front and enough room in the back that I can actually cook back there <laughs> and even if it should rain this is the end of the first morning of our Osborne Island hog hunt and I'm sitting here by the road with all my gear and it ain't out in the woods yet! Why? Well, uh, the reason is, this is Area 7. And it's an area I have not seen before. So rather than take my stand and go blindly thrashing about in the woods at the dark, uh, I went out and took my gun, and just enough to shoot with it, and we went out and we did a little bit of still hunting, and scouting so I could find the optimum area uh, to put the stand before I started hauling it around through these woods in the dark and through all the thick stuff. So uh, we've done that. 
I have my tree stand up a palm tree, and this is a typical view overlooking a bit of the marsh and the island I was speaking of. Here is yet another setup, and I'm overlooking a more active tidal area of the mark. We have concluded our Osborne Island hog hunt. And the gun we had was, of course, here, Brunswick rifle, which you know. And we also took our familiar 1858 Remington revolver as a backup pistol. Here shown safe with a cylinder removed whilst we're in camp. Now, unfortunately, I could not see any hog, but other people on the island were successful. Uh, most of the people got hogs. Now, these two heads right here were taken, and what I'm going to do with these heads is to make Brunswick stew out of them. Now, here are some photos of other hogs I've taken. This one is from Osaba, taken with a flintlock. And the one that follows is a 200-pounder that I took on my home ground with a crossbow. Now, following is the biggest hog I've shot. This one is 350 pounds, taken with that Encore pistol in Texas. And here's one also taken in Texas with a small percussion gun by Sharon Henson. Now, when it comes down to getting the hogs, yeah, you have to skin it. And this one is halfway skinned. And here we have the head fully skinned. Now, after you do this, uh, you wash it, of course, and you can boil it or roast it. And here's, of course, a look at the roasted hog again with most of the fat left on the head to nicely brown. And you can get other things, too, including liver and onions. And here's liver and onions with baked potato. And that makes a good meal. Not only am I the author of Backyard Deer Hunting, which also has some hog stuff in it, but also Extreme Muzzleloading, which has quite a bit to say about hogs, and Crossbow Hunting, which does too. Now also my e-books and Muzzleloaders for Hunters speaks about hog hunting, and also hunting big and small game with muzzleloading pistols. I do considerable of that. I have a new business books in the Profit series, Ideas for New Businesses, and here's a little blurb about me and about that book. Always wear rubber gloves when processing uncooked wild hog meat. Yep. Now, for more information, you can go to my website. Now, I'm going to be giving a seminar on March the 12th, too. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.